Good morning, church. Good to be with you today. Let me draw some attention to some of the things that are happening here in the life of the church. This is Holy Week, uh, and we have some services that are going to happen. Uh, we have our Monday, Thursday service at 7 o'clock here. For those of, of you who are helping with that, we're going to have a practice at 7 o'clock on Tuesday, but our service is going to be Thursday at 7 um, with a, a, a live portrayal of the Last Supper. Then we also have our Good Friday service over at the Twelve Apostles service at 8 p.m. We're involved with that as well, so that, that should be a great time of remembering uh, the words of Christ. Uh, then Easter Sunday, we have a service at 6.30 in the, the cemetery, uh, sunrise service, followed by a um, 9.30, 8 o'clock, and 11 service here to celebrate the resurrection. We also have our spring rummage sale that is coming up on April 27th, 28th, and 29th. So you may want to start rummaging through your stuff at home to see what you could share with us to help raise some funds for the church. Um, Cracker Jacks, Slim Jims, and hand lotions are what we're c collecting right now to support our troops. And this evening for youth group, we're going to have an Easter egg dash. Um, and that'll be a lot of fun, stuffing some eggs and... Um, giving them to some folks in the neighborhood. And then also our Grow Kids happens from 6 to 7.30. Tiffany wanted to, to let me know, anybody who was involved with the Easter egg hunt, we are having a debriefing meeting tomorrow at 5 in the community room. Any other announcements that we need to... Uh, Almeida. Oh, yes, the, the mac and cheese uh, dinner. We'll, we're going to have a competition like we've done in the past for... Um, we did this last year for our mac and cheese, and if you remember, Tiffany won, so we need to take her down a little bit this year. Um, so uh, that will happen right after the, the one service Sunday, which is April 23rd, um, and we'll have our mac and cheese cook-off right after the service. Also, she wanted to let me know that we are um, having the Cans for Wishes, or Wishes, Cans for Wishes, right? Um, coming in and talking with the youth group on the 16th. Um, so we are collecting cans. Um, if you have any cans, bring them in, and we'll make sure that they go to Cans to Wishes. Any other announcements to be made at this time? Well, let's begin our worship service this morning by sharing together with the last Latin uh, symbol, which is the sponge and the spear. If you're able to, stand as we celebrate this this time, the spear and the sponge. Later, knowing that everything had now been finished and so that scripture would be fulfilled, Jesus said, I am thirsty. Now it was the day of preparation, and the next day was to be a special Sabbath because the Jewish leaders did not want the bodies left on the crosses during the Sabbath. They asked Pilate to have the legs broken and the bodies taken down. But when they came to Jesus and found that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. Instead, one of the soldiers pierced Jesus' side with a spear, bringing a sudden flow of blood and water. These things happened so that scripture would be fulfilled. Not one of his bones will be broken. And as another scripture says, they will look on the one they have pierced. Let's join together with our opening hymn, Hosanna, Lauda, Hosanna. Please join me in all verses.
Let's take some time this morning and greet each other with the love of Christ. Well, the scripture passage that we're looking at this morning is from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 21, verses 1 through 11. And this is how it reads, the Word of God. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage on on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tied there with her colt by her, untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, say to that, the Lord needs them and he will send them right away. This took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet. Say to daughter Zion, see your king has come to to you, gentle and riding on a donkey and on a colt, but full of a donkey. The disciple went and and did as Jesus had instructed them. And, and they brought the donkey and the colt and, and placed their cloaks on them for Jesus to sit on. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut, their, cut branches from the trees and, and spread them on the road. The, the crowd that went ahead of him and those who have followed shouted, Hosanna in, to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, Who is this? The crowd answered, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
Hosanna. <laughs> Hosanna in the highest. We hear that on this Sunday, right? This Palm Sunday. Jesus enters into Jerusalem on a donkey which fulfills scripture and, and shows his servanthood. Uh, it, it says in Zechariah 9.9 9, that a king would ride a donkey into Jerusalem. And this is what he hears. He's facing the end of his life and he hears Hosanna in the highest. And the, and the people are, are welcoming, welcoming Jesus as king. They're throwing their garments on the ground, which signifies or symbolizes that they recognize that he was royalty. The people are finally getting it. And they say, Hosanna, Hosanna, which if you translate it, it means God save us, we pray. The people did not want to face their demise anymore. There were any more struggles. They wanted to be saved. This was Jesus' theme song, if you will, as he entered into Jerusalem that day. Save us, we pray. Hosanna. But save us from what? What did the people need saved from? Many were looking at Jesus as being some kind of political warrior to save them from save them from the Roman oppression that they were in. But looking back as people of 2023, we, need, we knew that Jesus came to save people from their own damnation. Jesus came to bring salvation for all mankind. But the question is, then, what did they need to be saved from? You know, one of the things that I have read or I've heard lately um, is that we don't talk enough about hell in church. Um, I hear people tell me, Pastor, what, what people need is a good fire and brimstone sermon. These people want me to tell people that they are going to hell if they don't shape up. Um, of course, the people that tell me this are usually not the ones that are thinking that they need hell. It is always the them, the, the homosexuals, the 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 those bums who won't get jobs, those people who seek their own demises, um, druggies, the abusers. Well, folks, as I read scripture, and I do that a lot in my occupation, um, I, I don't see an us and them. I see a we. We are all in this together. It is all who need saved. For God so loved the world. We know that scripture, right? John 3.16. And if we look at the word world there and translate it into, from Greek to English, it is the word cosmos. And, the, and it means all of us. Jesus came to save all from their sin. But again, what is Jesus saving us from? That is the hard thing for us to talk about. We need to talk a little bit about that today. Some, some elephants in the room. You know, one of the things that Jesus came to save us from is, is death. Death. It, it's a hard thing to talk about because you know what? Death is permanent. Since, since my parents died um, in recent years, uh, 10 years ago actually from my dad this coming June, it goes fast. Death has been something that I have thought a lot about in the past few years. When someone close to you dies, it makes you realize that death does happen. But until you lose someone who's close to you, a lot of times it is something that happens to other people and not to me, right? Right? I always have this feeling, too, that, that they're going to come back, that they've been on a long vacation, and they're going to come strolling into my driveway to, to welcome me and to, to be with me. Because people always come back, right? Well, not in this lifetime. Death is permanent. My mom and dad and everyone else who, who has died will not be back unless, uh, until the time of Jesus' return. It is, it is very permanent. Hell is another thing that we don't like to talk about. Hell is something else that we face, right? In our human state. It is a dark and awful place. The scripture shows us in Jesus' teaching that hell is a place where, where in hell you can see heaven, but in heaven they cannot necessarily see you. There's a separation, a chasm. 
Jesus also teaches us in, a, in, in his parables that the people in hell are really, really thirsty and just want a drop of water. And there is no relief from that thirst. Hell is referred to and compared to a lot of times in Scripture to a place called Gehenna. Um, it was a, a, a place that existed in the time of Jesus. It, it was a dark and, and, and lonely place. Child sacrifices were made there, and, and there was a constant fire burning. And it was full of worms and maggots. It was a burning garbage dump. That gives us an, a picture of what the gospel suggests that hell would be like. A burning, maggot-filled garbage dump. And you know what? It is what you and I deserve without the grace of Christ. There are other pictures of hell, too. We have some contemporary uh, pictations of, of hell um, throughout uh, media and stuff. One of, I saw an interesting presentation of hell one time in a show, if you remember the show, called The Twilight Zone. Anybody remember that show? It was a show that was an anthology show, and it had different people on it each episode, a different story. And in this one episode, um, it showed a thief who had been caught by the police. He is shot and killed. And he has shown his, his life in front of him, and he has done nothing right. He lived a life where he cheated, and he did just bad things. And he ends up in a place where he gets everything he ever wanted. He wins all the time at the casino. He has an endless supply of money. He has beautiful women falling for him. He can't figure it out. Why has he made it into heaven? He's getting everything. It soon drives him nuts that he gets everything that he wants. Even when he says, you know, I want the thrill of robbing a bank, they all arrange it for him so that he can succeed. It drives him nuts. There is no chance of him getting into trouble. Everything, everything goes right, and it starts to drive him nuts. And he starts to ask the people in charge of this place called, uh, that he was at, if he, could, if he could get out of heaven and go to the other place. And he is told he is in the other place. He is in hell. The chance is gone, and for him, that is hell. Now, that is a Hollywood presentation of hell. We all have our ideas of, of what our own personal hell would be like. My music director at the last church that I was at said hell for him, and maybe you can agree with this, is playing the same song, over and over and over in eternity. Maybe think of something like Baby Shark. Um, <laughs> think about that. I told him hell for me would be having to draw Hello Kitty for the rest of my eternity. I'm not a big fan of that. Over and over again for eternity, if you can imagine. Or maybe watching the same episode of a show that I didn't like so much over and over again. We can think of it, right? Being, being in our own personal hell. But being, if we think about Scripture, being thirsty, being thirsty is the worst. That is what Scripture tells us, that we, we would be thirsty, parched forever. Feeling a little parched right now. Jesus told the woman at the well, if you remember, that he offered her what? He offered her living water. Water that would never go away if she believed. And she, we, we know that Jesus offers us living water too so that we might never be thirsty again. So this being in hell is being without living the living water. That's why people are so thirsty. This is what perishing means. Being without the living water, perishing. Being without God. God sent his son so we would not what? We would not perish, right? Now you might be saying this morning, <clears throat> okay, I understand that Jesus uh, saves us from death. He saves us from hell. But why would there need to be such a place as hell if, if God is all loving and full of grace? 
No, he gives us a free choice. He loves us that much. Max Cato says in his book, 316, he gives us a visual I image that the entrance of hell is blocked off with all kinds of caution tape and signs that say do not enter. Another way to say that <clears throat> is that we are given all kinds of opportunities not to choose hell. But some of us, we will just travel there anyway. We're on some kind of highway to get there, right? We don't choose God, and, and Christ may have come so that we don't perish, but we don't respond to it, and we never will. But those of us who believe, those who trust, have this hope. Look what it says in the book of Revelation. It is at the end of the story. <clears throat> it is where the, um, it is what is to be. If we look at the book of Revelation, we see a vision from God to John at Patmos, the island. It says a new heaven and a new earth, and the holy city will descend to the earth. No more sorrow or mourning. God will once again with the people. If you remember, God dwelled with the people <clears throat> in the garden, and we sinned, and we were kicked out. <clears throat> Excuse me. And God sent his son as a kinsman redeemer to bring us home into the holy city to be with him. We will not perish if we choose this way. For whoever believes in him will not what? Will not perish. We will be with God. So there you have it, folks. You can all go to hell or we can choose this holy city. It calls for a response, right? This is what we need saving from. A place void without God. We need to be saved from that. If we, if we want to choose a life without God, <clears throat> God will lovingly give that to us in eternity. God is not going to give us what we don't want. God is not going to give us heaven if we want hell. So we should be saying, Hosanna. Hosanna, to God save us, we pray. Many are choosing to live a godless life. And maybe I am preaching to the choir this morning and you all have your act straight and you're all believing and following who God is. But let us invite the city to descend into our life so that we can dwell with God in the meantime. This message is a message of peace for us, for those who believe. It gives us peace. But for those who are struggling with God or who don't know God, this is a message of warning for those who do not know God, who choose not to know God. So as a people of God this morning, we should be waving our branches and saying, loud Hosanna, loud God save us, we pray. Deliver us so that the people who are not choosing to follow God might be aware of a God that saves. It really should be our mission. You know, we are entering into Holy Week. It is the week where we look at the last week of Jesus. It's a great time to, to, to look at ourselves in the process. We will be having a service here on Monday, Thursday, looking at the night in which Jesus was betrayed. That'll be here at 7. Um, and then Friday evening at the 12 Apostles Lutheran Church, we will be having a tenebrae service going through the readings of the last days of Christ and the disciples' response. Then Easter morning in the cemetery at 6.30 and here at uh, 8, 9.30, 11, we will be celebrating the, ce ce the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. What a, what a time. Death is a permanent thing. Christ defeats death. Resurrection is a permanent thing too. So as we celebrate this whole Easter thing, you can see it's a mixed bag. There's, there's death and so, a separation, but there's a, the whole hope of the resurrection. And you know, I am excited to celebrate that day with my church family. Yet there are so many people that could be here that aren't. Not that church is the end all, we, and not that church saves. It is God that does the work of salvation. Yet what are we doing to get ourselves ready 
and others to be ready. To shout, Hosanna, say it with me this morning, Hosanna, let our God indeed save us. Let's pray. Lord God, we thank you for the opportunity to remember, to remember what you've done for us, to remember the state of our lowly, sinful being, to remember the need for salvation. And as Lord, as we think of that, help us to, to shout loud hosannas, to shout loud, God save us, we pray. And we just pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's join together with our praise hymn this morning, Tell Me the Stories of Jesus. Please rise and join me in all verses. We take some time to pray today. Is there anything that we need to be celebrating? Anything that we need to be uh, praying for? Sharon, please. So Bill and Kelly, we need to be Eva Jane is going to have knee surgery on Tuesday, so we want to be praying for her as she undergoes that, and that she's going to be kicking when she comes out. <laughs> Anything else? Amanda, please. Okay, so peace in your family. Absolutely. Lois, please. Prayers answered. Hallelujah. It's always a good thing to lift up. Okay, for for Daryl, as as yes, we, we want to be praying for Daryl as he is gonna have some open heart surgery. We're gonna be praying for you, my friend. Yeah. Yeah. Anything else that we want to be praying for? There was a family um that was lifted up in the uh, nine thirty service. Um, that live in Butler, and a gentleman, his name is Zach, and he is 27 years old and has a brain tumor and is 
is, is not going to be able to be healed, and he is just facing his last days. So we want to be praying for that family um, as we pray this morning as well. Um, and also for, for John, who is having some issues with um, um, asthma and, and all that congestive stuff, and the doctors are trying to find some answers to help him out. So let's take some time to, oh, Margaret, please. Yes, there was a lot of damage, and 26 people, I heard, were killed in, in the storms. Down in your neck of the woods in, in Tennessee? Really? Is your family okay? Okay. Wow. That's scary when it hits home. Yes, and also we want to be lifting up those, the families of that tragic shooting this past week at the school in Nashville. So let's take some time to pray. Lord God, we thank you for this opportunity to pray together as a church. It is a blessing. And Lord, as we pray this morning, we come before you with not a shopping list of things that are on our hearts, but we acknowledge you as mighty God and, and worthy to be praised. Lord, we also want to confess to you this morning and tell you that we are people that are broken. We need to be saved. And we thank you for the saving work on the cross, for the work that Jesus has done. We thank you for grace, Lord. <clears throat> and Lord, as we pray this this morning, there are things that are on our hearts for families that need peace, Lord. We pray for, for Amanda's family and, and for peace there. Pray for Eva Jane as she is going to... to uh, have her knee replaced this week. We pray that that would be such a healing for her and that, that it would feel so good afterwards. But in the process of healing, Lord, we lift her up to you. For Daryl, we pray for him as he is preparing for surgery as well, and we, we lift him up to you. Pray for healing. Lord, we pray for those who have, are, are dealing with devastating loss. Whether it's through storms or through, through violence, we, we just lift them up to you. Pray for peace. We pray that these folks might see the, the love of Christ even through these bad situations. In spite of these situations. We pray for John, who is... Um, going through some testing right now to see what the doctors can do for him. We pray that the right medication would come forth. And we pray for peace in the midst of that. And Lord, as we pray all this this morning, we thank you for Jesus. We thank you for his work on the cross. We thank you for the many things that he has showed us, shown us in, in who, he, who he is, who he was. And Lord, one of the things he showed us how to do is how to pray. And we thank you for that prayer. And what a great thing it is for the church to pray. And we say together, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and power and the glory forever. Amen. So as we continue to worship today, let me remind you that part of worshiping is giving. And if you feel called to be part of our offering this morning, the offering plates are near the door. But let's continue to, to lift up praises to God as Jen comes forth uh, to play our offertory. Let's remember and give praises for, to a God that has given us so much.
Lord God, bless this offering that we receive today and bless us in the process of, of using it. May we shine your kingdom through what we do. And we just pray this in your name. Amen. You may be seated. One of the blessings that we get to do during this season, and what a great way to, to shout Hosanna, is by sharing together with a, a holy sacrament, the sacrament of communion. So let's prepare our hearts as we prepare for this holy and sacred time. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us together confess our sins before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love towards us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are all forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. From the earth you bring forth bread and create the fruit of the vine. You formed us in your image, delivered us from captivity, and made covenant to be our sovereign God. You fed us manna in the wilderness and gave us grapes as evidence to the promise of the promised land. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. When we turn aside from, from your way and abused your gifts, you gave us in him your crowning gift. In emptying himself that our joy might be full, he fed the hungry, healed the sick, ate with scorned and forgotten, washed his disciples' feet, and gave a holy meal as a pledge of his abiding presence. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took the bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the cupper, supper was over, he, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you, this is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in, in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ offering for us as we proclaim together the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. The 
the body of Christ, broken for you. The blood of Christ poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. The United Methodist Church practices what we call an open table. Therefore, you do not need to be a member of this church or any church to take communion with us. We just ask that you're coming forward today shouting Hosanna, recognizing that you do need salvation. You do need, you do need Jesus. So we're going to partake in communion today. Um, as you come forth, we'll be sharing it with you at the altar. You'll come first and um, we'll have uh, different sections come forward and then we'll instruct you what to do when you come forward. So let's prepare our hearts for this holy and sacred time. And I'm going to ask this section here to come forward. If you, if you can, if you need community to be brought to you, just let us know. And maybe the first two rows here. So come forward as we prepare for this feast. You may kneel if you're so able. Communion is a time to remember uh, and to remember what Jesus has done for us. In the upper room, he gave his farewell to his disciples and he celebrated a meal with them and he reminded them what he was going to do. And he gave them the, the bread and he broke it and he said, this is my body broken for you. Take and eat in remembrance of me. Let's do likewise. Take and eat in remembrance of Christ. That same night he took the cup and he gave thanks for it and said, this is my blood poured out for you and for many for their forgiveness of sins. Take and drink in remembrance of me. Take and drink in remembrance of Christ. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. I know my own sheep and they know me. And I have other sheep that are not of this fold. I must bring them also. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. Arise and go in peace and may the voice of the good shepherd be your comfort in sorrow and your guide in happiness. Amen. The rest of that section could come forward and maybe the first Rip's row and Amanda's row come forward. You may kneel if you're so able. So on the night in which Jesus gave himself up for us, he broke the bread and he gave it to his disciples and said, this is my body broken for you. Take and eat in remembrance of me. Take and eat in remembrance of Christ. That same night, he took the cup, gave thanks for it and said, this is my blood poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Take and drink in remembrance of Christ. Jesus said, everyone then who hears these words of mine and does them will be like a wise man who built his house upon the rock and it did not fall. 
Arise and go in peace and by faith in the true word of God. May you have life everlasting. Amen. Amen. The rest of you folks in this section could come forward. kneel if you're so able. In the upper room when he was with his disciples, he gave them a time to remember him, something that we now call a sacrament. We call it communion. We call it Eucharist, the great thanksgiving. And at that night, he took the bread and he broke it. And he said, this is my body broken for you. Take and eat in remembrance of me. His body broken for you. That same night, he took the cup and gave thanks for it and said, this is my blood poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins take and drink in remembrance of Christ. Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. Arise and go in peace and may you ever walk in the way of life and truth. Amen. Now the rest of you folks, you may kneel if you're so able. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took the bread and he broke it. And he said, this is my body broken for you. Take and eat in remembrance of me. That same night, he took the cup, gave thanks for it, and said, this is my blood poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Take and drink in remembrance of Jesus. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Arise and go in peace, and may the bread of heaven nourish your soul into everlasting life. Amen. Let's pray. Lord God, we thank you for the sacrament of communion. And as we celebrate it today, help it to to nourish us to do the work of, of the Holy Spirit, the work of the Son, the work of the Father. And we pray that it would encourage us, that it would nourish us to do it through your Holy Spirit. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.
Let's join together with our closing hymn this morning. All glory, laud, and honor. Please join me in verses 1, 2, and 4. You know, it, it can be so overwhelming sometimes, life, right? We can um, be so distracted that we forget that we need to be delivered each and every day. And just know this, too, that your church is praying for you, whatever you're going through. Um, if you need to this morning, want to take some time and, and spend at the altar, you're more than welcome to. Um, we're not going to chase you out of here anytime soon. But let's, uh, let's go forth. In this, into this holy week, shouting Hosanna, knowing that we need to be delivered, knowing that we have a God that indeed wants to save us, knowing that we have a church that loves us along the way, knowing that, that uh, the grace of Christ is there with us, the love of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit. Let's go forth in peace. Amen.